Hughes Brothers is proud to offer the Paralam Stress T Bridge System by Trust Joyce McMillan. The following video shows the installation of the first such bridge in Nebraska, initiated by the Saunders County Highway Department. The Paralam beams for the Coon Creek Bridge in Valparaiso, Nebraska, arrived on the job site at 7.30 a.m. Reassembled at the Hughes Brothers factory and ready for installation. The beams were arranged on the truck to allow for direct placement from the truck to the abutment. The beams have attachment points for easy lifting. These T-beams weighed around 6,000 pounds. The corresponding box beams weighed around 10,000 pounds. The stress T system results in longer spans and shallower superstructures. These beams span 61 feet and needed to be only 31 and 1 half inches deep to carry the HS20 loading requirements. All Paralam components are treated with pentachlorophenol in oil. Hughes Brothers is able to get 100% penetration of the preservative into each timber, ensuring an excellent deterrent to rot and decay. First beam was set on the center line of the abutment and fastened down to the cap. This beam will be the reference to which all other beams are pulled. No other beams will be fastened down to the, to the sill until later. A timber sill is typical for attaching the beams to the abutment However, steel bearing plates have also been used. The sill cap can easily be attached to timber, steel, or concrete abutments. Existing abutments can also be reused if they are in good condition. Once the, fir once the first beam is fastened down, the tees are placed outward in one direction until the exterior box beam is set. The box shape is used for extra longitudinal stiffness and to facilitate attachment of railing systems. These box beams have the steel shoes for a PL1 crash-tested railing assembly already installed. This railing system is similar to the one tested by the University of Nebraska-Lincoln. After the first half of the bridge is set, the stressing rods can be inserted and pushed through each subsequent beam as it is set. The stressing rods and all other steel hardware are hot dip galvanized for superior corrosion resistance. The beams are then placed outward in the other direction until the final box beam is set. Then all of the stressing rods can be pushed completely through the deck. High strength bars are also placed through the bottom of the beams at approximately 20 foot intervals. These bars help stiffen the beams and prevent cupping of the deck as the upper bars are loaded. These beams can be these beams can be installed in any kind of weather. The Paralam beams resist warp, thermal expansion, shock, and more importantly, de-icing salts. These are factors that can affect the integrity and durability of other bridge materials. Paralam is the only timber material currently available where full penetration of the preservative can be achieved. Hughes Brothers uses a light oil carrier for a clean surface and excellent appearance. All of the beams for the Coon Creek Bridge were set before lunchtime. An elapsed time for the total substructure placement was four hours. The beams are consistent in depth and width, making installation simple and ensuring a smooth, even deck surface. Taller T-beams should be temporarily fastened together during placement to prevent rollover. Some minor jacking may be required after all beams are set in order to properly align the profiles on the flanges. These profiles are milled into the beams to help transfer the shear forces from beam to beam. After all of the beams are set, the steel bearing channels, washers, and nuts are installed. Stressing of the rods is done by hydraulic jacks which are provided by Hughes Brothers. The rods are jacked from one side of the bridge according to the sequence and the specifications. The final load in the bars is around 20,000 20, pounds. The jacking sequence is repeated after the initial pass since some loss of bar load may occur as adjacent bars are stressed. After stressing is completed, the beams can be fastened down to the sill cap or abutment. The beams on longer span bridges are pre-cambered to account for dead load deflection. All camber glue joints are tested at the factory to ensure proper strength. 
After the rods are stressed and the beams are fastened down, the posts can be set into the steel shoes. Many other railing styles are available, most of which can be completely installed at the factory. The railing is lifted and bolted into place. This railing is also a paralam and conforms to the PL1 strength requirements. The entire superstructure was completed in just seven and one half hours after the beams arrived on the site. All Trust Joyce, Hughes, Trust Joyce Hughes Brothers bridges require an asphalt wearing surface. A tack coat of asphaltic oil, then a two to five inch layer of asphalt is the minimum topping. The optimum covering according to experts is a tack coat of oil, a thin asphalt layer, then a geotextile waterproof membrane followed by a final two to three inch coat of asphalt crowned to give the bridge proper drainage. Paralam has consistent predictable strength and excellent treatability and is accepted by Ashto. Bob Vila will now take you on a quick tour of the Trust Joyce McMillan manufacturing facility in Vancouver, British Columbia. So what do we got here, Dave? Well, we have the veneer from which we make our product. We can not only utilize this good veneer that uh, you'd use in other processes, we can use what is considered waste. We call it fishtail. It becomes, it comes because the log isn't perfectly round when we start the process. Yeah, so this has been veneered off of a round, uh, is it Douglas fir? That's right. Yeah, where's it grown? Uh, in Oregon, Washington, and here in British Columbia. So none of it is imported. That's right. And it looks like it just got veneered a week ago. What's the moisture content? It's high. It? It's about 30 to 70 percent water wow. in this pile right now. So what's the first step in making our, your... Our your, first your... step is right over here and it's drying the veneer. Okay. How do you actually dry it? Well, we take the wet veneer and we put it right into these machines. It travels on these belts throughout a dryer blowing hot air at about 170 degrees Celsius on both sides. How hot is that in Fahrenheit? About 340 degrees. And does it get all the moisture out of it? Down to about 2 to 4 percent. Fabulous. When the veneer comes out of the dryer, we sense the, uh, the moisture content. And if it's too wet, we mark it with a black paint and then put the veneer back through the dryer a second time. And what's the next step? The next step is uh, the veneer goes right into the strander. The strander. So you're, you're actually shredding that big sheet into strips. What we're really doing is cutting them into long strips. The machine is like an old-fashioned real lawnmower that cuts them in these strips. The long ones give us strength. The short ones don't. We want to get rid of those. So why do you why do you switch direction here on the conveyor belt? That's because we've got an ingenious device that the long ones are have to jump this gap. You got a gap here. As long as you've got them on a diagonal, the long ones go through and the short ones fall in. The... That's right. Then they're ground up and they're used for energy to heat the dryers. We try and recycle the whole material. In Fabulous. The so all of these will actually become a beam. What's the next step? Uh, the resin is applied to the strand. So what's actually happening within that mechanism? This is our resin application system. Yeah. It applies the resin and it dries the excess water off the strand and then they come up the conveyors and you can see the water. What kind of a glue have you used for this, this resin? Is a, this is a phenolic resin. It's the same as used in waterproof marine pie, which been around 50, 75 years. Okay, and these are basically the only two ingre ingredients, right? That's it. That's so what's the glue? What's the deal with this conveyor belt this below is, us? This is a belt that has a conveyor that moves around in a circle, but at the same time, the whole belt's moving back and forth. Yeah. And what it's doing, what it's doing for us is dropping those strands down into the top you can see on the right, so they're parallel and so they're well overlapped. Both the parallelism and good overlap are critical to the strength of our product. So it's a linear overlap and that is in strength and union. Yeah. yeah. That's right. And where are they going here? Okay, what we have down here is a trough that by the time the trough is always moving towards our press. Yeah. At the same time, the mat is about 30 inches deep and it's in the press it's slowly compressed down to about 11 and a half. 30 inches, inches down to 11 and a half. That's right. That's wow, that's amazing. Okay, Dave, so what's going on here at these controls? The total process line is controlled by this computer. Yeah. Density, moisture content, speed, the length of the beams that we cut off. Right. The whole thing is done right here. Okay, and then what's the next step? The curing, the pressing and the curing. The whole beam is cured by microwave energy, gets it over the boiling point of water, 
that solidifies the product and gets a good glue bond. So that's over 212 degrees Fahrenheit. Absolutely. Great. And, and then, then what? We have the pulling stations, which exert over 100 tons of pulling force that help pull the beam right out of the press. Without them, the press would jam shut and wouldn't work. Of course, because of all that pressure that's being exerted there. That's right. Great. And what happens? What we have next is a flying cutoff saw. This cramps onto the beam to the length we want, and then it comes right across with the blade and cuts it off to the length you want. Right now, the market's asking for 48 feet length because the whole deck is full of 48 foot long beams. But you could make them kind of, it seems, as long as you would want, right? It's a continuous press, and we could theoretically, if we could handle them. Yeah. In reality, 66 feet is about as long as we uh, produce under yeah. a normal circumstances. Yeah. Then what's the next step after you've cut them to length? The beam is then put through the sizer, which just cleans up the outside edges, makes sure it's perfectly square. Then if we want a smaller cross-section, it goes to a saw that cuts it down to a smaller cross-section to a sander that sands all the sides. Then it goes to an intensive grading process, make sure there are no flaws in it. We wrap it and we're all ready to send it out to the market. It's packaged and it's ready to go into a building site. That's great.